Chrome Clear operators are extremely important for saving time in any given round. Seeing how important these operators are, you want to be picking the right one for the job. So in today's video, I'll be going through the three Rome Clearing operators, Jackal, Lion, and Dokubi, and rating them out of 10 in four key categories. These categories are Gadget, Loadout, Secondary Gadget, and Versatility, same as usual. Then at the end of the video, I'll be adding up their scores to come to a verdict. So make for sure you watch until the end to find out who is the best Rome Clearing operator. To start off today's episode, I'll be going over Jackal since he was the first one to be added to the game. Jackal's gadget is the Inox goggles. These goggles, when activated, reveal the feet of defenders to Jackal, allowing him to scan them. These footprints will show up in different colors based on how recent they are. Red footprints are extremely recent, yellow footprints are relatively recent, green are old, and blue footprints are extremely old. How recent the footprints are will dictate how many pings a scan will provide. The more recent the footprints are, the more pings you will get, with the maximum pings being four and the minimum amount of pings being one. This obviously makes Jackal an extremely strong choice for tracking down and pinching roamers. This is because every defender, except for Cav, will leave footprints, allowing you to see the trail of where defenders go. There is a reason why Jackal is one of the most banned ops in the game, and it's because of how difficult and annoying it is to go against his strong roam clearing ability. You really can't do anything against the Jackal except hold your ground and hope you win your gunfights, because if you try to rotate, you risk walking into a trap the attackers left for you. Overall, due to Jackal's strong ability to force defense defenders into a corner, I'll be giving him a 10 out of 10 in the gadget category. Moving past his gadget, I now want to discuss his loadout. Jackal has the choice between the C70 assault rifle, PDW SMG, and the ITA-12L shotgun as primary options, and the USP-40 pistol, and the ITA-12S shotgun as secondary options. The C7E is an excellent assault rifle. It has high damage, a good fire rate, low recoil, and a decent magazine size. It also has some great optics available with it having up to a 2X. As for the PDW, it is also a great option. It has a high magazine size, solid fire rate, solid damage, and access to the 1.5. Me personally, I'm more of a fan of the C7E, but it's really just personal preference. His third primary, the ITA-12L shotgun, is just objectively bad though. It has a high damage, but its damage drop off is horrible, making it really hard to take advantage of the damage it has, and its pump speed is very slow. Trust me when I say that this shotgun is the worst one in the game, and it really isn't worth running. As for his secondaries, the USP-40 pistol is a solid pistol with good damage and a solid capacity. And the ITA-12S provides decent soft destruction utility, allowing you to open soft surfaces or barricades. Overall, he has an extremely strong loadout. I would argue one of the best in the game. And so I'll be giving him a 10 out of 10 in this category. Next up, after his loadout, I want to talk about his secondary gadget selection. Jackal has a choice between smoke grenades and claymores. The smokes can help him cut off sight lines to protect the plant, or they can allow him to cover line of sight for his team to rotate. As for his claymores, they can be useful for holding a flank along with a drone, but I think his smokes are the more favorable option overall. So I'll be giving him a six out of 10 in the secondary gadget category, mainly for his smoke grenades. Now for the final category, versatility. Jackal is a very versatile operator. He has the capability to open soft surfaces, cover a plant, track defenders, and roam clear. You really can't go wrong with picking Jackal in 99% of situations. So I think he's deserving of a nine out of 10 in this category. Now that we have finished talking about Jackal, it's now time to talk about Lion. Lion's gadget is the EE-1D. This is a drone that flies above the map, and when activated, the drone will scan the map for moving defenders. While it is scanning, defenders must stay completely still. If they move, they will be continuously pinged three times. This makes Lion's gadget strong in combination with team coordination and droning. If you drone out a defender, you can activate his EE-1D, and this will force the defender to either stand still or rotate and get pinged. On top of his ability to work well with a roam clear, he can also be used to stunt the enemy's aggression. If you are playing against an aggressive enemy team, Lion's Gadget can help force the defenders to slow down because if they don't, they will be pinged and they will most likely lose their follow-up gunfight. Overall, considering how versatile his gadget is, I think he's worthy of an eight out of 10 in the gadget category. Following up his gadget, it is now time to discuss his loadout. Lion has a choice between the V308 assault rifle, the 417 DMR, and the French shotgun as primary options, and the P2 pistol, GON6, and revolver as secondary options. The V308 is a stupidly strong assault rifle. It has a large drum magazine, easy to control recoil, solid damage, and a good fire rate with magnification sights available as well. I would recommend this gun over his other two options any day of the week. It is way more consistent overall, and in my opinion, it's just a really fun gun to use. Speaking of his other options, the 417 isn't bad by any means. It is arguably the best DMR in the game with high damage and a solid capacity to back it up 
but automatic weapons are just more versatile so you definitely don't want to be running it over the v308 assault rifle now this can't be said about the french shotgun the french shotgun is undoubtedly the best shotgun in the game it has stupid range a high damage output and a decent pump speed now, this is great and all, but on attack, shotguns are just way too niche. By running a shotgun, it will prevent you from taking long range engagements. And since he doesn't have a secondary SMG, it makes the uses for his shotgun a lot more niche. The shotgun definitely isn't bad, but shotguns overall on attack are considered to be a mean pick. Anyways, moving on from his primary options, his secondary options are actually pretty solid. The P2 pistol is a decent pistol with good capacity and a solid damage. You really can't go wrong with it. The GON6 provides him capability to destroy destroy hard utility, which is extremely strong, especially online since he has a 50 round drum mag on his assault rifle. And then his third option, the revolver, is a high damage but low capacity pistol. But considering he has access to the GON6 and the P2, me personally, I wouldn't consider running it. I would just run either the GON6 or the P2. In 90% of situations though, you should be running the GON6. So taking all of this into account, I'll be giving his loadout a seven out of 10. And I think that is perfectly justified. Since I wrapped up his loadout, I can now discuss his secondary gadgets. Lion has a choice between EMP impacts, claymores, and flashbangs. EMP impacts are extremely useful for helping to get a wall open. Flashbangs can help him play aggressively, or to burn ADSs, and claymores are probably his worst option. They are decent for stopping runouts or flanks, but they really aren't that great because of how obvious they are. Overall, I'll be giving him a seven out of 10 in the secondary gadget category as well, just because I, I don't think he has anything crazy going for him. After talking about secondary gadgets, it is now time to discuss the versatility of line. This, in my opinion, is by far his strongest aspect. He has the ability to assist with opening a wall, burn ADSs, deal with defender aggression, and roam clear. And you can pretty much get away with picking him in any lineup you possibly could want. Taking all of this into account, I think he's worthy of a 10 out of 10. Now for the final operator of today's video, Dokubi. Dokubi's gadget is her tablet that allows her to call Defender's phones. While the call is active, every Defender will produce a loud audio cue due to their phone ringing, Defenders won't be able to get on cams, and Dead Defenders will have all of their cams disabled for the length of the call. On top of this ability to call Defenders, Dokubi can also hack Dead Defenders' phones to get access to their cameras. This is a huge counter to operators like Echo, Valk, and Maestro, since Dokubi gets access to their cameras as well when hacking. And she gives these cameras to her whole team. Considering how much her gadget can do, it makes her an extremely versatile choice for not only roam clearing, but also countering Defender Intel. Taking all of these aspects of her gadget into account, I think she is deserving of a 10 out of 10 in the gadget category. Now that we have established the fact that she has an extremely strong gadget, I can now discuss her weakest aspect, her loadout. She has the choice between the MK14 DMR and the Boss G Slug Shotgun as primary options, and the SMG12, C75 Auto, and Gone 6 as secondary options. The MK14 is a really solid DMR. It's actually my personal favorite in the entire game. It has a solid damage, good fire rate, and a large capacity. But as I said earlier, you want to have an automatic weapon on the attacking side. DMRs are decent, but they are very nice and not the strongest possible option. However, the Boss G, her other primary option, isn't good at all. It can only have two bullets loaded at any given time since it's a double barrel shotgun. It has high recoil, and while it may have high damage, it doesn't justify how niche this option is. As for her secondaries, the SMG-12 is statistically one of the best machine pistols in the game, but it has extremely high horizontal recoil, making it difficult to use outside of extremely close ranges. But if you want some more controllability, you can bring the C-75, but it has worse stats all around, and an extremely cumbersome sight. Her final secondary, the GON6, would normally be extremely good, but since Dokubi doesn't have an automatic primary, she can't really afford to bring the GON6 over the machine pistols at her disposal. Taking all of this into account, I think Dokubi is worth a five out of 10 in the loadout category. Since I talked about her loadout, it is now time to discuss her secondary gadget options. She has the choice between the EMP impacts, flashbangs, and GON6. I've talked about all three of these already on other operators, but they just so happen to be three of the best options an operator can have. The only thing that can make her selection better is access to nades. So considering how strong her options are, I'll be giving her a 10 out of 10 in the secondary gadget category. Now it is time to discuss Dokubi's versatility. This is another extremely strong aspect of her. She can just do so much for her team. Dokubi can hack the defender's cameras, roam clear, help to open a wall, burn ADSs, cover a plant, shut off the enemy's intel gathering capabilities, and finally, she can destroy hard utility. With how much her kit provides, she deserves nothing less than a 10 out of 10.
Now that I answer the question you clicked on the video for, who is the best roam clearing operator? Well, let's go to the scores. In the gadget category, Jackal and Jokubi tied with a score of 10 out of 10, and Lion got a score of 8 out of 10. Then in the loadout category, Jackal got a score of 10 out of 10, Lion got a score of 7 out of 10, and Jokubi got a score of 5 out of 10. Moving to the secondary gadget category, Jackal got a score of 6 out of 10, Lion got a score of 7 out of 10, and Jokubi got a score of 9 out of 10. Now finally, in the versatility category, Jackal got a score of 9 out of 10, and Lion and Jokubi tied with a score of 10 out of 10. Out of 10. This makes Jackal's overall score a 35 out of 40, Lion's a 32 out of 40, and Dokubi's a 35 out of 40, meaning that Jackal and Dokubi tied for first place. And this is our ranking in order. As always, this video is strictly my opinion, and if you disagree, feel free to leave your opinions in the comments down below. If you enjoyed today's video, I make Rainbow Six Siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. If you want to watch another video just like this one, a video will be popping up on your screen right now where I compare the flank watch operators in Rainbow Six Siege. I'll See you next time, friends, and peace.